Corinthians chapter 3, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm going to do my uh, very best to share these last few moments with another brother. Uh, just in line with what Brother Larry has been saying about the coming millennial kingdom and our place there with the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to look at the event that's going to take place just before uh, the Lord comes back in glory, the judgment seat of Christ. There's three simple thoughts I want to look at. First in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, there's a brother by the name of Woodrow Kroll of the uh, Back to the Bible broadcast that wrote a book. I don't remember the exact name of the title. I think it was something like Your Final Job Interview. Your Final Job Interview. And it's about the judgment seat of Christ. And the place and the work that we are going to have to do for the Lord Jesus in a coming day. Because there is teaching, I believe, that uh, would show us that we're going to have different works to do. And uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, I think, bears that out. There will be different glories. But it's going to be determined, I believe, at the judgment seat of Christ. And the first uh, part of this, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, let's just look at verse 13. Uh, well, let's go back to 12. It's hard to uh, be brief on this one, but I'll, I'll try. Now, if any man build upon the fo this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. When you look at the context of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, five, or 3, rather, and the whole book of 1 Corinthians, it's really the, uh, the assembly that's in view, isn't it? This is the, the book that we so often look to uh, for assembly truth. And here in this chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, in light of the coming judgment seat of Christ that we believe will take place after the rapture and before the beginning of the millennial kingdom. Sometime in that seven-year period, while there is so much going on on this earth in connection with the tribulation, we're going to be in an atmosphere uh, far away from these events that are going to come upon the earth in judgment. And we're going to stand before our Lord Jesus Christ. And our lives are going to be reviewed. And I want to make it very clear that it's not uh, with a view to punishment. That has been all settled, as we have been, spent the afternoon talking about that, in terms of our salvation and uh, God's dealing with us. And the issue of sin and the satisfying of his righteous claims and all of these things that we uh, were going over and uh, fills our, our hearts uh, with a, a contentment and a, uh, just a sense of satisfaction that that work has been finished. But at the judgment seat of Christ, our lives will be reviewed. And what I think is in view here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 is the assembly. That's the context. The assembly, the Apostle Paul makes it clear that he as a, uh, uh, according to the grace of God, verse 10, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. What's in view here is how we have labored in that building, the assembly of God. Paul being the master builder and the warning that we all need to be careful how we build upon that foundation. How I have labored in the building. And there are two things I think that we can take from this chapter. Uh, number one, what materials are we using? And what are our methods? One has to really hang on to their notes here. <laughs> the wind is trying to take them away on me. The material that we're using and the methods that we use in building in God's assembly. 
in chapter 11 of this uh, first Corinthians, we read uh, that chapter that tells us much about the functioning of an assembly. He says in verse one, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances or the traditions as I delivered them to you. Then again, in second Thessalonians chapter uh, two, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Chapter 3 and verse 6, he gives them a, a warning. Now I command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. So the Apostle Paul has laid out for us the traditions that that were delivered to him by the Spirit of God, how the assembly is to function, how we are to labor in this building, the methods that we are to use, and the material that we build into God's assembly. And we read very clearly there of the uh, gold, the silver, and the precious stones, as opposed to the wood, hay, and stubble. And what is going to endure in that coming day? So brethren, and sisters, let's just look for a moment at our, our own uh, lives in God's assembly and ask ourselves, how am I laboring in this building? It's going to be reviewed in a coming day. In first in Second Corinthians, rather, in chapter 5, just turn with me uh, briefly, please, to Second Corinthians chapter 5. We'll look at the second aspect of what is going to be examined in that coming day. Verse 9, 2 Corinthians 5, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Here we have, I believe, a wider sphere in connection with the judgment seat of Christ. And it is not uh, how we have labored in the, in the building. But the emphasis here seems to be, to me, how we have lived in the body. Every one of us here that have been saved by the grace of God, however many years we have been living in this body, a body that is in the possession of the Spirit of God that entered in the moment we trusted Christ and the promise that we can be filled with the Spirit of God. We know that we don't need more of the Spirit of God. We want to make that clear. But He certainly needs more of us. Oftentimes there are areas of our life and we all know what I'm talking about without me having to go into any detail or use any illustrations. We all know that just coming to a meeting and participating and interacting and, and being around the Christians, that doesn't tell the whole story, does it? We have a lot of hours that we spend uh, in the workplace or out on our own or uh, whatever it might be. A lot of hours that we have to give account for. And so the challenge here is how I have lived in the body. The manner of life in connection with the building, it's the material and the methods that I might use. But in connection with my body and how I live from day to day, what is the manner of my life? How does it measure up? And in that final job review, if you will, what am I going to have to give account for in that coming day? Now, I know, again, I want to make this clear, that it is not judgment that's in view. It's reward. There will be loss. I think we will have a sense of that loss, but it is not going to overcome us with sorrow and regret 
and cause depression or any of those things, we will be aware of it. And it will determine a lot as to our future in connection with our service for the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me be very clear. Every one of us are going to enter into the joy of our Lord. And in that coming day, when it's all settled and done, we're not going to be living with regrets for eternity. No regrets in that day. And I think we're going to be in for a lot of surprises. There's so many of us that live in, in the spheres uh, that we live in in our lives. I don't live in the sphere that you live in. And you don't live in the sphere that I live in. Every one of us have different spheres that we uh, live in and move in. I was thinking about my wife just before I got up. It's good to think about our wives. And uh, thinking to myself, because she has heard me uh, preach this message before. I don't know if anybody remembered Larry, Brother Steer's message. But uh, I know she will remember mine. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, it would not surprise me one little bit if the if the preacher's wives get a special reward in that coming day they have to listen to us preach all the time sometimes over and over now i know brother Keynes might say that's a little bit extra biblical <laughs> perhaps it is <laughs> but nevertheless uh, how these things are going to unfold in a in a coming day we're not really sure but we will have to give account of how we lived in the body then i want to look at the last one in uh, romans chapter 14 because i i said i'm going to be brief i'm going to try to stick to that romans chapter 14. this is a very important one and i know we could look at other aspects but this is just the way it it came to me and i remember years ago i don't even remember which who it was preaching along this line and uh, i've given a lot of thought so we have how we have labored in the in the building in first corinthians chapter 3 how we have lived in the body in second corinthians chapter 5 here in romans chapter 14 and verse 10 but why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set at naught thy brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of christ what do we have here? How I have loved the brethren. And we'll include the sisters, of course. How I have loved the brethren and the sisters in my assembly, wherever I meet them. What is my attitude toward my fellow saints in the Lord? This is a big one. And here I think uh, what is in view is the motive. We're going to have to give account. Because so often, as we read in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, uh, that uh, there is strife, uh, let nothing be done through strife and vain glory, but in lowly, lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. That's a, that's a strong verse. Strife, putting the other person down. Vainglory, putting yourself up. And so often when things come between brethren and sisters, whether it's something that comes up about how the chairs are set up or how the chick kitchen is organized in the basement or how the meetings are run and how the the schedules are set up for preaching and how, who leads the Bible studies and, and all the things that are connected with uh, getting along in God's assembly and, and cooperating. You know why there are many times tensions and strife that can evolve? Someone feels that they're not getting the place they deserve. Or they feel the other person most certainly doesn't have the ability to handle that responsibility i could do it better what does it say in philippians chapter 2 
let each esteem other better than themselves. That doesn't mean that you sit down and think about that brother and say, you know, there's got to be something there that he's better at than I am. No. It's esteeming them, their very person, better than myself. The place of lowliness, place of humility. I don't know why, perhaps it's just a factor of getting a little older and uh, having gone through a lot of situations that I have witnessed and some that I've had some little part in maybe trying to help out. But lately this subject is, I sometimes get a little emotional over it because I think of all the things that can happen in an assembly. One of the most destructive things is when brethren and sisters aren't getting along. One of the most divisive and destructive things that can happen is when something comes up and brethren or sisters start to butt heads, can't get along, they can't resolve it. And you know what happens? No one wants to give in. No one wants to be the one that would just take the lowly place and apologize. You know how to apologize, don't you? You go to that person, you say, well, if I've done something wrong or if I've said something that offended you, then I'm sorry for it. <laughs> Brother Brendan raises his eyebrows. He knows that that's not how it's done. But that's so often what happens. That is so often the way it happens. We think, well, I've done my part. I apologize. Oh, that was quite an apology, wasn't it? If, if. I, I don't care whether you're in the right or the wrong. Most of these situations, there's enough blame to spread around. And if I could, can just humble myself before the Lord and go to that person and say, I shouldn't have acted that way. I was wrong. I acted in the flesh. Brother or sister, could you forgive me? I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have acted that way. I try not to do it again. And do it in humility. And it wouldn't hit hurt to shed a few tears either. I tell you, give that person a hug because there's far too much of that among us. We need to learn to love one another. These three simple aspects of the judgment seat of Christ, how I've labored in the building, how I have lived in the body, how I have loved the brethren, all to be reviewed before the blessed person of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we live in the anticipation of that. The shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and then our final job review. May the Lord bless his word. Amen.